New sales data is in from Japan for last week, which is a big week for Switch because it included the launch of Ring Fit Adventure, a new game from Nintendo that's uh, trying to make working out a bit more fun, of course. We know they've done this in the past with things like Wii Fit. Uh, and also the launch, for third-party-wise, of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition. Uh, that is obviously a big third-party release on Nintendo Switch. Uh, and there actually was another brand-new release in Japan anyways, Story of Season, Friends of Mineral Town from Marvelous. Uh, that was a game that came out in Japan as well. And uh, let's just hop right into the numbers because... Obviously, uh, Switch has been dominating in Japan, I believe, pretty much since launch. For the most part, there's been a, a spare week here or there where PlayStation 4 or something uh, actually had more games in the top 10. But uh, Switch has nine of the top 10 games, including one through seven. So, for starters, Ring Fit Adventure, as you're seeing on screen right now, debuted at number one, moving 68,497 units. Number two was Story of Season Friends of Mineral Town at 66,193 units. Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age S Definitive Edition is right there at 15,744 units at number three. Number four is Disney Tsum Tsum or Tsum Tsum Festival uh, by Bandai Namco Games. Man. I think I played that game in E3. Interesting to see that in the top 10. But here it is at number 4 with 11,824 units. Minecraft, the Nintendo Switch version of it again by Microsoft Game Studios, moved 9,020 units at number 5. At number 6, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the game that just keeps on giving and doesn't seem to ever go away, moving 8,305 units. That game's almost at 2.5 million in Japan. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2 is at number 7, moving 7,964 units. It's actually an 11% bump for that game. We'll see if that game ever hits a million in Japan. That'll be very interesting. Then finally, we have a PlayStation 4 game. At number 8, this game is one that's been sticking around on the charts for a while. Monster Hunter World Iceborne Master Edition. Third-party game by Capcom. Uh, this is, I believe, the uh, full version edition that includes like all the DLC um, for the Iceborne stuff. Uh, that's got 7,468 units uh, moving there. Down 20% week over week, but I mean, it, there, there wasn't much going on this week. Uh, some Switch stuff. At number 9, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate still sticking around. 9% bump this week, moving 7,312. And at number 10, we do have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition debuting with 7,218 units on Switch. Now, obviously, that is a late port of a game that's been out for years. And uh, these kind of games, these Western-style RPGs, don't tend to do extremely well in Japan. Uh, so I, in, the fact that it's even in the top 10, to me, is actually pretty impressive. Now, if you look further down and glance at the hardware sales we'll notice that nintendo switch sales are actually down week over week uh it moved to 54,067 units compared to 56,680 units and this looks like they're combining uh, nintendo switch and nintendo switch light uh, if you can see the breakdown light sold less than the nintendo switch uh normal version you know the one that can dock and all that but uh that's all right lifetime to date they had the switch sitting at 9.6 million units which is a healthy amount ahead of playstation 4 8.4 still you know, a decent ways behind 3DS, but 3DS was obviously on the market a lot longer. It was 24 plus million units sold, uh, and it is way ahead of Vita and Xbox One. Uh, interesting, Xbox One's actually over 100,000 units. I didn't know that. That's pretty. That's pretty interesting, considering that it like <laughs> hardly ever sells. Although they did sell 142 units this week, which is like double from last week. That's uh, that's interesting. <clears throat> now, uh, one thing I do want to talk about here, as you're seeing some gameplay on screen. Of, uh, of the witcher 3 i know i've been showing a lot of the witcher 3 lately uh this comes uh from uh i believe a, a youtube channel I'll, I'll put a link down in the description for it uh i am very curious about uh the witcher 3 on switch in particular and ring fit adventure i want to kind of focus on those two because we also you know not too long ago over the weekend got sales for 
out of the UK for these games for last week. And uh, they don't give exact numbers in the UK, but Ring Fit Adventure debuted at number three. And uh, the <laughs> Witcher 3, the Wild Hunt, uh, Definitive Edition, all that stuff, debuted at number five. Now, uh, that number five actually includes all versions, including the ones on, on Xbox and PlayStation. But apparently 99% of the sales uh, increase that week was from Nintendo Switch version, which is interesting because that's a really good debut for the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt in the UK and it's interesting for a multitude of reasons like just focusing on that and we'll get, we'll get to Ring Fit Adventure in a moment you have to start to wonder if CD Projekt Red's first attempt at a Nintendo Switch game even as a late port uh, is performing well enough and now we, we're not gonna have MPD numbers for a while in this you know or until like the middle of next month but I think that the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Edition is actually probably outperforming expectations for CD Projekt Red. And if that's the case, you have to start wondering how serious are they going to take the Switch moving forward because this was previously their biggest game ever. And now we have Cyberpunk 2077 coming out, and that's going to be their new biggest game ever. And we have to start wondering... Would they do something like bring Cyberpunk 2077 over? You know, would they wait for a Pro or a Switch 2, or would they just actually just bring it over to the current Switch? Because while it is a current gen game and it does look a bit more technically impressive, I guess, than The Witcher 3, which is interesting to say considering how technically impressive The Witcher 3 is, uh, you have to wonder would they consider it? And they were actually asked about Cyberpunk 2077 coming to Nintendo Switch, and here's what they said. So CD Projekt Red's John uh, Mamis uh, did an interview with GameSpot, and uh, you know he said that the team hadn't even considered a game like Witcher 3 would be possible on Switch, um, and it's unlikely that Cyberpunk 2077 would be coming, but here's exactly what he said, and this is why uh, there's some hope. It says, who would have thought a game like The Witcher 3 would be possible on Switch? So who knows? I guess we'll see. If we decide to put Cyberpunk 2077 on the Switch, if we can actually do it, but probably not. So what he's saying is, basically they haven't really considered Cyberpunk 2077 for Switch. That's that's what it sounds like. It sounds like it hasn't even been a thought of theirs. But he said he also didn't think The Witcher 3 w would ever be on Switch either. So, you know, if, if they can pull off Cyberpunk 2077 on Switch, they just might do it. Uh, but, you know, he, he uh, he's, he's just kind of just assuming, without attempting to do it, that they probably won't bring Cyberpunk 2077 to Switch, but it's not ruled out entirely. He's saying, hey, look, The Witcher 3 is on Switch, so who knows? Maybe we can. Uh, that is definitely um, not necessarily a death knell to the idea of this game coming to Switch, and I know what a lot of people are going to say. Do we Should we even want Cyberpunk 2077 on Switch? I mean, look at The Witcher 3. Look how blurry it can look at times. Look at this, look at that. Bottom line is... People are really enjoying The Witcher 3 on Switch. Everyone I have talked to that has played The Witcher 3 on Switch is thoroughly impressed by this game on Switch. Not just impressed at uh, what the game's able to do and what it's able to look like on the platform, but especially when they're playing in handheld, this is what they wanted. They wanted this game in portable form like that, and it just works, and they don't really have too many complaints about it. So... I think people look at The Witcher 3, 3 Wild Hunt Edition, they say, hey, look, if Cyberpunk 2077 can be at least this good in portable mode, you know, even if, you know, when you blow it up on a TV, it doesn't look great, but in portable mode, it looks this good, why wouldn't we want it? And I think that's what uh, people are kind of hoping is that some magic can happen again because I, I have seen some developers out there uh, who are playing Witcher 3 on Switch literally put up on Twitter things like, you know, this is like magic right like what what's happening with the witcher 3 on switch like this is magic this is some voodoo crap we have no idea how this was made possible uh and they did it and so who knows we, we shouldn't rule out the idea of cyberpunk 2077 coming to switch and on top of that you know when when, when you're thinking about why would they bring that game over the witcher 3 wild Hunt edition appears to be selling extremely well and when you have a game from a third-party company selling extremely well you know that that third-party company's got to be thinking about what else they can bring over. Now, there's other games that they can bring over, like they can bring over The Witcher 2 from the 360 days, or maybe even remastered Witcher 1 or something, uh, so you can get the whole Witcher series on Switch. They could also do, bring over, I think they have Gwent as a game, as a separate card game that they could bring over, but I honestly think, you know, they got to start looking towards the new games for, for Switch, like Cyberpunk, and even if it doesn't come out for a year or two, I think it still might be almost a worthwhile investment, because even those people that have, that have already played it on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, maybe even the next-gen 
and systems or PC, uh, they might want a, a more portable version of it. Uh, and I think that's what we're seeing with The Witcher 3. I think there's some people who are actually double dipping in Witcher 3 just so they could have it with them uh, wherever they go because it's just it's just such a great game. People don't mind replaying um, a masterpiece like The Witcher 3. Now, Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun one. Um, I have watched a few preview videos. Uh, I think one by Game Explain. Uh, and a couple other places, and everyone seems to really like Ring Fit Adventure. Like it, it it's not, it's a gimmick. <laughs> I mean, they're holding this giant ring, so let's just be honest. It's a gimmick, but it, it it's a gimmick that makes sense. It, it, it's a gimmick that works. It's a gimmick that you do feel like you're working out, but you're also having fun while working out. And I think that is a big step up uh, over what We Fit did because I remember playing We Fit back in the day. And I enjoyed it for what it was, you know, with the balance, the balance board and all that. Uh, and th they had some mini games, some hula hooping and stuff like that that was fun. But it wasn't the same kind of fun that I have with other um, with other things. Like if I'm going to work out, you know, I'd rather dance or something, you know, like in Just Dance or something like that. So uh, apparently they found, found a way to make working out extremely fun. Uh, and even though you're squeezing this giant ring thing, it, it, it's a real workout. And uh, I'm excited to see if this can become over time like the new Wii Fit. I don't think it's ever going to be as big as Wii Fit or as popular as Wii Fit. Uh, but I think that Nintendo's kind of got like a sleeper hit on their hands uh, with Ring Fit Adventure. I could see it moving a couple million units worldwide, uh, which to me would be a pretty big success for any workout game, let alone uh, one that Nintendo's publishing. So uh, this is just one to keep keep your eye on. We'll see, we'll see what it does in uh, North America and all that. Uh, obviously, now we have UK and Japan, um, at least a, a frame of an idea of, of how it's doing there during launch. So um, I'm excited by, by Ring Fit Adventure. I, I will probably pick it up myself. Uh, for those who don't know, I have been like on the weight loss trail and working out and, and all that. Now I'm clear to do full workouts. So who knows? Ring Fit Adventure might just become part of my daily routine for a little bit as I test it out. Uh, but I'm pretty excited uh, about this game, about Witcher 3, and who knows what the future holds, man. There is so many games coming out. We can't forget Luigi's Mansion 3. Guys, we're just eight days away from Luigi's Mansion 3. Can you believe that? Also eight days away from Halloween because Halloween's my favorite holiday of the year, folks. Whew. I think I might be uh, a little Ron Burgundy over here. <sighs> Anyways, all right, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah.